Good evening. In today's spooky Wrath of Math lesson, we'll be proving that if x and y are integers and their product x times y is odd, then those integers x and y must both also be odd as well. This is a viewer requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. Specifically, the request was to prove this statement by proving the contrapositive, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm assuming most of you are already familiar with contrapositives, but let's begin with a quick recap just to bring us all up to speed. Suppose we have a statement like P implies q. In this case, the statement is that for integers x and y, if x, y is odd, that's p, well that must imply that x and y are both odd. That's q, the conclusion. The contrapositive of a statement like this is an equivalent statement that goes like this. Not q, the negation of the conclusion, implies not p, the negation of the hypothesis. So, since these are equivalent statements, in order to prove both of them, it is sufficient to prove just one. Sometimes, the contrapositive of a statement is easier to prove than the original, which is why it's a useful proof technique to be familiar with. It should make some sense intuitively that a statement is equivalent to its contrapositive, just to sort of explain half of the logic. If p being true forces q to be true, then obviously q being false forces p to be false, because if p were true, then q would have been true. So with that said, let's get on with the proof. We want to prove this statement by proving its contrapositive. So a natural place to begin would be by writing out the contrapositive of the statement. Recall that the hypothesis of the contrapositive is the negation of the conclusion of this statement. The conclusion is that our integers x and y are both odd. So the hypothesis of the contrapositive is the negation of x and y being odd, which is that at least one of x or y is not odd. So x or y is even. So there's the beginning of our contrapositive statement. We begin by mentioning the objects that we're talking about. That part doesn't change. Let x and y be integers. And then if x or y is even, so at least one of x or y is even, then what does that imply? Well, recall that the conclusion of the contrapositive is the negation of the hypothesis of the original statement. The hypothesis of the original statement is that the product xy is odd. So the negation of that is that the product xy is even. So if x or y is even, then the product xy is even. And that completes our contrapositive. Let x and y be integers. If x or y is even, then the product x, y is even. So if we can prove this statement, that will also prove the original statement that we were interested in. And I think in this case, it's pretty clear how we can prove the contrapositive, whereas it was a little less clear how we might prove the original statement. So let's finish things up by going through this quick proof of the contrapositive. Again, we're assuming x and y are integers, and now we're assuming that at least one of x or y is even. It could be that x is even, or it could be that y is even, or it could be that x and y are both even. Either way, the proof is going to proceed in basically the same manner. So without loss of generality, let's just assume that x is even. So we'll say without loss of generality, W-L-O-G, we assume that x is even. So without loss of generality, we let the integer x be even. This means, by definition of an even integer, that x must be some multiple of 2. So x is equal to 2 times k for some integer k. For some k, that's an element of the integers. Again, that's by definition of an even number. Since x is even, it must be equal to some integer multiple of 2. Now I think the rest of the proof is pretty clear. We of course want to show that x times y is also some integer multiple of 2. Well, what is x times y? Let's write it out. x times y must be equal to 
by substitution of the even definition we just applied, by substitution, x times y is equal to 2 times k, that's substituting 2k in for x, multiplied by y. Then, multiplication is associative, so 2k times y is equal to 2 times ky. And now we're basically done. K and Y are both integers. The integers are closed under multiplication. So K times Y is also an integer. Thus, XY is an integer multiple of two. Hence, XY is even. And that's it. That's the end of the proof. We just showed that if at least one of X or Y is even, then their product must also be even. So if the product of two integers is odd, it must be the case that both of the integers are odd as well, which is the original statement we wanted to prove. Because if even one of the integers were even, then the product would have been even when we have that the product is odd. So again, if we've got two integers, x and y, and their product is odd, then both of the integers must be odd as well. That's how we prove this statement using the contrapositive. So I hope this video helped you understand how to prove that if the product of two integers is odd, then both the integers must be odd as well using the contrapositive. You could also have a similar proof of this statement by contradiction. So go ahead and give that a try if you're trying to practice some different forms of proof. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you'd like to help support Wrath of Math and all these spooky lessons, I'd really appreciate a small donation on PayPal or a small monthly pledge on Patreon. I'll leave links to those down in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time and be sure to subscribe for the spookiest math lessons on the internet.